Hey guys, Easy here, and today's topic is about different jungle playstyles and what playstyle is best suited to carry games with. The reasons for making this video is because a lot of the comments on my jungle guides specifically ask questions like How do I carry losing lanes? How do I win the early game? What champion should I be playing? Why can't I climb through low elo in the jungle role? Why is everyone blaming me for lost games? So therefore, I am answering all these questions and more in this video. I hope you find it useful. Now to start this off, I do need to say that my view of the jungle role can be very different from yours. It doesn't mean that my view is correct or that yours is correct. In a way, both can be. Some people view the jungle as a second support role. A jungler should work for his laners. I view it as the opposite. My laners should work for me. It's a jungle style that you will find mostly common in China on their servers, where laners will instantly drop their lanes and go play for the jungler, because they understand that a strong jungler means secured objectives, and those objectives lead to winning games. In the West, jungle is more viewed of a role that helps laners get strong, and it is because of the laners being strong that we can secure objectives. It's the same role but with two very different perspectives. I tried to carry my games using my own style, and I prefer to leave my teammates as few choices in the games as possible. When I play Masters lobbies, I play differently than I would play in Platinum lobbies. I can trust players more in higher elo, and I don't always have to be the carry. Why do I do this? For my own mental sake. Because if I am forced to have all this responsibility on the map, and if something goes wrong, the laners immediately blame me, then you can be sure that I will be making most of the decisions. It's just fair at this point. We fight when I think it's a good fight. We back off when I back off. Simple stuff like this. You might think that it is a very arrogant thing to do, and to some extent you are correct, but it is needed if you're going to stay mentally sane playing this role, because it can get tough. This way, when you lose, you can be sure to only blame yourself, that you didn't do a good enough job, but when you win, it's because you played your cards correctly. I modeled myself after watching a Gurren play for a very long time, getting a rank 1 in Korea, and just recently getting both rank 1 and rank 2 on EOS a combined 4000 LP and his style has always been the same. It's very simple. If there's nothing good on the map, we go back to farming. We don't force bad fights just for the sake of fighting or because our teammates are spam pinging. We don't take huge risks because we might lose and it's not worth it. Every action is always weighed against the risk and you make quick decisions on the spot, is it worth it or not? That's how he plays the game and he is one of the best solo queue junglers in the world. But is it the best playstyle? What about picking champions like Rengar, Evelyn or Kane? Some players smurf with these champions and they look unstoppable, right? Therefore, they must be good. A gold player playing Rengar in gold elo will look very different to a diamond player playing Rengar in gold elo. It's the same champion, the same runes, the same items, the same jungle path, but they are very different. Why is that? Because of playstyle and understanding bigger things like tempo, power spike, priority, vision, etc. But we can make this extremely simple to understand, and we can create a playstyle that is a bit more dynamic, one that works for almost every champion, and as you climb, you will know what to do, and what things to let go of, and what things to do more of. Picture a line between low elo and high elo. In the lower ends, players are not very efficient. They might know how to play their champion, but they don't understand the map, and they don't know how to close out games. And they don't really understand how to carry. The way they carry games is by killing people, and when they can't kill people, they don't carry games. Even if they get a kill in the early game, they don't always know how to use their leads, and they can't close the game out properly. At the highest tier of play, mostly in LCK, you might see a zero kill game for about 
20 minutes and then one kill happens and the entire game is snowballed off of one kill because players understand where to be on the map, what they should be doing and what the enemy team could be doing and they completely shut the game down. But in low elo this doesn't happen so kills are not really worth as much. This by default makes ganks less valuable in the lower ranks because kills are not leveraged properly. That means that farming your jungle gives you a higher chance of winning since it is guaranteed gold and XP and XP gives you stats that are also worth a lot of gold. Champions like Elise and Ivern and Skarner are very bad in low elo for this very reason. They give you ganks, they give you kill pressure but they need to trust that the player getting kills can actually carry the game. In high elo, they are the best junglers right now because a kill early is actually worth something. In low elo, it isn't as much. So if you are a silver jungler and your mid laner dies 3 times in 5 minutes, it does not always mean that the game is over because the player with 3 kills is extremely likely to throw. You just have to be good enough yourself to catch the throw and turn the game around. But who actually dominates low elo? What champions are catching the throws most of the time? Champions like Shivana, Nocturne, Amumu, Udyr. And that is mostly because they stay in the jungle, they farm up and they gain massive XP advantages and they play around objectives and they all have a very simple go button. As soon as someone from the enemy team steps out of line or goes too far, they are there to punish them in a very easy manner. Shivana ults in and deals a lot of burst damage to win the fight. Amumu goes in, gets a massive ult off and wins the fight. Nocturne goes in and nobody understands what the fuck is going on and the enemy carry is dead and you win the fight. Udyr stuns someone, quickly one shots them and then wins the fight. On the other hand, you have a Rengar that doesn't really know how to combo properly, that jumps in on someone, gets one shotted himself and then loses the fight for his team. Extremely simple kits are proven to be the best in low elo for players that are low elo. If someone like Scrub Noob was to play Rengar in silver elo, he would look godlike. But Timmy who thinks Rengar is broken and picks the champion barely uses 10% of that champion and it looks weak. So if we go back to this line we can say that in low elo you need to be more selfish and play around yourself with champions that are easy to play and that can have high impact because giving your teammates gold is not as reliable as it is in high elo. More gold on you will yield better results the lower elo you are. As we move up the line we can start giving more and more resources to our teammates and then we can move into the more specialist champions like Elise, Ivern, Rengar, Nidalee etc. Also so when we look at this line, in the lower ends we can take more risks without being punished. If a jungler ganks bot in low elo, they won't lose their entire topside camps as punishment for ganking. In high elo they are either counter ganked because people are tracking each other or completely robbed topside because they ganked without information on the other jungler. If we learn how to counter jungle properly and we know how to track the enemy jungle camps and we use tab and we count minions then every time the enemy jungler ganks we can make sure to get something back. Enemy jungler ganks bot and gets a shared kill of 150 gold but you stole 3 camps topside for 300 gold and XP which is also a difference in gold because they lost the 3 camps. So they lost 300 while you gained 300. A 600 gold difference minus the kill share gold. It's a huge swing. So back to the line. We now understand that we can take a lot more risk in low elo because it is very unlikely for it to be punished. But as we move up the line we need to start calculating more on what is worth it and what isn't. Now let's go back to the line again. In high elo. Players are very good at responding to bad situations like an early jungle invade or a lane swap 
They know when to yield and not die and give away unnecessary gold. Junglers will ditch a camp or one side of the jungle and go play the other side, where they are safe to farm. In lower elo, players respond very badly to this. Anything that is out of the norm, they quickly feel uncomfortable and they make very poor decisions. They will try to fight you for the camp, even though they know that you are strong level 1. Not only do they give you the camp, but they also die for it, which makes it even more terrible. Later on, they try to play the game as usual, and they go for plays that are illegal when they are so far behind. And it works, because they are not punished enough by the player who is the stronger jungler. You put the enemy jungler behind, they go bot lane and they get 2 kills, and now they are ahead. It happens literally every game. But let's say that you knew jungle tracking and you took a look at the map and you understood that hey, this Evelyn that I killed in her topside jungle will go bot side because that's where she got camps up and my bot lane is currently a bit pushed up. It's very likely that she will try to gank there. If I counter her, I completely shut her down while getting myself even more ahead. Does this happen in low elo? No. You kill the Evelyn in her jungle and you continue farming the same side without looking at the map or thinking about what her place could be. Then she goes bot, she gets two kills and snobbles the game and you lose. Even though you had a lead. This is where that mentality is from by the way. You have heard this before. I won my lane but my teammates are trash and I lose because of them. Now you know how to play around it. Think about the opportunities that your opponent is presented with. Can they play around those opportunities? If they can, be there, punish them. So far this line has answered all these 5 questions. We deal with bad laners by playing selfish and getting ourselves strong. Ready to punish mistakes which are inevitable in low elo, no matter what the kill count is. We win the early game by tracking the enemy jungler and shutting them down, either by invading them or punishing them for showing on the map. We play champions that are easy in design with a simple go button that also clears jungle camps very fast. We don't play specialist champions because our team is not good enough to make full use out of their kit. We have established that we need to focus more on ourselves and that we make the decisions in the game. If we see a good fight, we take it, and we hope for a follow-up. We have also learned that we need to know more about the game in general in order to make more of a difference in our own games. We need to learn more about jungle tracking, invading, tempo, vision, priority, objectives, etc. We can't turn our brain off and just play jungle with a strong champion and think that we will climb. It will not work. You will win some games, yes, but you won't climb. And finally we have established that players in lower elos are not knowledgeable enough about the game to correctly assign blame for mistakes that happens in game. Therefore slurs and insults that are thrown at you as the jungler become invalid because they are incorrect. Just mute them and play on. I hope that you find this video guide helpful. I like taking concepts like this and breaking it down in simpler forms because I find it easier to get through to people. If you did enjoy this, make sure to like the video and if you have a question about something regarding jungle, drop a comment down in the comment section and for more content like this, drop a sub and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.